everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Really excited about this weekend, really excited about the weather, really excited about this time of year. One thing I love about summertime, and as you'll learn, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a seasonal guy. I love all the seasons, but what I love about summer is I love the get-togethers. I love the cookouts. I love the hanging out with friends and family, exchanging recipes, kids running around playing loud and crazy. Story of my life, if you know me, and I love it. Actually, our neighbors, really wonderful people, and we've kind of started a tradition where every Saturday night we get together, either at their house or at our house. Sometimes they cook, sometimes we cook. Kids run around and play. Adults sit and talk. We all play games. We have a great time. And what I love about it the most is I love the food. And this time of year, especially this weekend, the following weekend, 4th of July is right around the corner. So all I'm thinking about right now is grilling out, people getting together, fireworks, and all the different food. Always great with cookouts and with people getting together. Everybody brings different dishes and it's always fun to try new things. I love doing it. And what I wanna do this year for 4th of July and what I wanna do with you all is some, frankly, some summer classics. Some old school stuff that easily gets forgotten about or that over the years gets modified by so many additions and deletions and changes that people just forget the basics of what made, makes these dishes amazing and what made them the classics that they've become to be. So what we're gonna do today is put together a pasta salad and a creamy potato salad. And then tomorrow, breaker, we're gonna grill some burgers and possibly some hot dogs. And I'm just gonna get back to the basics on what makes a great burger a great burger and what you don't need to put in there and how to just make it taste fantastic just by being a great piece of meat. But for today, let's make our side dishes. We're gonna make a pasta salad and a potato salad. I already say that? I already said that, so I just said it again. But let's go ahead and do it and I'm gonna show you how easy it is and how much fun it is to make. Now. As you can see, I've kind of got everything laid out here and I did it ahead of time, not because I didn't want to show you all and do it with you, but because there's a lot of steps and I did all the steps to see how long it would take and I wanted to review it with you and then show you how to mix it all together and make the final product. Let's start with our pasta salad. I love pasta salad. There are so many different variations, so many classic fun recipes. So many things you can put in or don't need to put in, but um, the way I do it, it's just a recipe that was taught to me years ago that it obviously I've modified over the years and just makes it a lot of fun. First and foremost, you've got to get your pasta cooked. Tri-color, single color, shape, size, whatever you want. Pick your own, pick what you think is fun. I love the look and the color, so this is what I went with, something nice and classic. Already cooked it. Why did I cook it ahead of time? Because again, steps, processes. So I cooked the pasta for nine minutes. And if you watch the pasta video from the other day, a lot of water in the pot, really hearty, steady boil going, two tablespoons of kosher salt, and that was it. And then I dropped in the pasta. Gave it some stirs, let it cook, tasted for firmness, nice al dente, and I pulled it off and dropped it in the colander. Now here's your first critical step for making proper pasta salad, in my opinion, and it's also your tip of the week. As soon as you drain the pasta, rinse it off with cool water. I don't wanna make the pasta cold, I just wanna stop the steam. Still nice and warm, but I stopped the steam, drained it real good, and put it in the bowl. Take your dressing, whichever one you choose. I'm choosing a creamy Italian dressing, and I dumped about three tablespoons, three and a half tablespoons of dressing on the pasta, mixed it up while it was still hot, and then I put it in the fridge. And I forgot about it for at least an hour, and here's why. Pasta is a sponge, especially when it's hot. It soaks up everything. So let's get those flavors in there. Put your dressing on it while it's hot. 
stir it up and then put it in the fridge to cool for an hour or two and let it soak up all that dressing, let it soak up all that flavor. So now it's basically cooked in the pasta. Love it. That's a little trick to make sure you really get the flavors in there. Okay. We did that about an hour, two hours, take it out of the fridge and then you can start adding your accoutrement, whatever you would like to add. What we're going to add today, thinly sliced hard salami. Grabbed about, honestly, this is really, really thinly cut salami. So I grabbed about eight slices and then chopped them up into little pieces, thin little pieces. And I'm going to drop all that in. I want all of this salami in here and just, the moment things hit this pasta, you move it, okay? It hits and move. Believe it or not, flavors are going everywhere. And the key to something like this, to a salad, is the flavors. Red, yellow, orange, bell peppers. Isn't that a gorgeous color? I love this color. I cleaned each one, got rid of all the seeds, trimmed out all of the fiber on the inside of the peppers and then chopped them up into little pieces. Why did I trim off all those fibers and stuff? Why go through all that work? Look, aesthetic. See the fiber on the inside there? I don't want that. It takes away from the color and the shininess of the pepper. I don't want it. I want it to be shiny. I want it to be bright and vibrant. And in order to do that, I need as much of the pepper skin, the inner layer as possible. So I carved out all that fiber. If you watched the sea scallop and homemade teriyaki ramen video, I showed you how to trim those fibers out of the pepper, but we'll do it again here in just a moment, just so you can see one more time. It's not super hard, but it is a little tricky and it does require a lot of attention. Okay, I've mixed in our peppers. And the last thing I'm going to put in, Kalamata olives. I've got three and a half tablespoons of sliced Kalamata olives and made sure that I got two teaspoons of the juice, of the olive juice. And I'm mixing all that in. Look at these colors. Look at these colors. I love these colors. Oh, they're beautiful. Now, that's everything put together. There's more you can add if you want. Cherry tomatoes, broccoli, feta cheese, all real good. I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is add a homemade creamy Italian salad dressing. Now this dressing has in it grated Parmesan cheese. So I'm not going to mix the feta cheese with the Parmesan that's in here, even though the flavor from the Parm is already absorbed in the dressing, but I'm not going to mix match cheeses and flavors. I just want to stick with a nice classic Italian. Oh, I love that smell. Now this jar has 16 ounces of dressing in it. I'm obviously not going to use that much. I am going to use the equivalent of eight tablespoons of dressing with this obnoxiously large spoon I have here. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, look at these colors. That is a thing of beauty right there. Now, I've got everything in and I've got it mixed. Now, believe it or not, I'm going to serve this at our cookout. So the most important thing you can do when you make something like this is to make it the day before. Why? To, merely to take up time because you're excited about getting together with friends. No, it's because I want this to sit in the fridge overnight, get really cold and let all these flavors marinate together, soak up that dressing and really just knock your socks off with it, a sweet, tangy Italian taste. 
and that's it. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take that pasta, wrap it up tight, put it in the fridge, and leave it there 24 hours. When it's time to take it out and serve it to your friends, to your family, to whoever you want, give it a nice toss, scoop up everything, move it all around, and then top it off with your freshly chopped, nicely dried green parsley. That pulls all the flavors together with the stirring and the green on top really makes it pop and vibrant and lively and people are attracted to it because they what? They eat with their eyes, exactly. They eat with their eyes. They see that and it's, it's so inviting and exciting and they want to eat it and I love it. So for your Italian salad dressing, if you want to get one at the store, there's nothing wrong with that. Go grab one at the store that you like. I recommend a creamy Italian dressing for this pasta dish. That's what I used. Um, but you don't need one. You can get a traditional Italian salad dressing. If you'd like to follow along with me and make what we made, you're going to make this one yourself. It's super easy, but there's a lot of little things. I'm going to list them all off for you, and all you're going to do is mix them all together. You need to take a bowl and put six tablespoons of mayonnaise, five tablespoons of olive oil, one third of a cup of white wine vinegar, a fourth, a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar, three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, three teaspoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of kosher salt, two small cloves of fresh garlic that you mince up yourself, really small, and then your herbs, oregano, basil, and an Italian seasoned blend, one teaspoon of each, dried herbs. Put all of that in a bowl and whisk it all together really hard. Just keep stirring, keep stirring. Let it all come together. Taste as you go. Just whisk it all together really hard. Put it in a jar and a bottle, leave it in the bowl, whatever you want, and put it in the fridge. And leave it in the fridge for at least an hour. Two hours is better. The longer it sits and gets cold, the more everything comes together and it starts to thicken up slightly, but not much. And that's it. That's the dressing. And that's the pasta salad. How easy is that? Piece of cake, huh? And it's so much fun and it tastes so good. I cannot wait for you to try this. You're going to love it. Your friends are going to love it. Your family is going to love it. Enjoy, huh? Now, let's go ahead and quickly whip together our potato salad. A lot less going on with creamy potato salad than there is with an Italian pasta salad. But again, a classic that tastes so good. Everybody loves well, everybody around here I know loves, because I make it all the time. My wife makes this all the time, and we get a kick out of it. So many great flavors here, and so easy to do. The other thing I want to reiterate, like I said before, I did a lot of this stuff earlier today because of the timing and the cooling that's required, and mix it while it's warm, then wait for it to cool, and thought it would be easier to just set it all up and go over it with you, and then mix it all than it would be for us to do it all at the same time. You know what I mean? So here we go with our potato salad. This right here is four russet potatoes peeled and boiled to a nice al dente, slight firm texture. Quick tip with doing this, you peel your potatoes, cut them in half and throw them in a pot of boiling water. After they get going for a while, 10, 12, 15 minutes, poke it with a fork. If you can get the fork into the potato, perfect, with ease, get them out of there. If you go poking a fork into a potato and it starts to fall apart and you've got a nice, easily breakable potato that you know you can make mashed potatoes with, you overcooked them, don't use those, won't work out right, they'll just fall apart. Firm. Al dente. Get those out of the water. As soon as they're out of the water, put them in a bowl, put them in the fridge. Two, three hours. Because you want to get them good and cold before you mix into a potato salad. One, for the aesthetic, for the look. And two, 
you don't want your potatoes to absorb all of this. You want these flavors to mix together. And if you mix it all together while it's hot, the potatoes, like the pasta, are sponges and will suck it all up and dry out. We don't want that to happen. So let them get good and cold. That way they stay nice and pretty. Once they're good and cold, took them out of the fridge and I sliced them up into chunks, little chunks. Put them back in the bowl. Next thing you need to do with that is just mix in your accoutrement. I love that word, accoutrement. So what we do, what I find is nice, um, and my wife, to be honest with you, my wife came up with this recipe for our dressing and it's really, really good. And what blends really well with it is, first of all, dill pickle. One dill pickle chopped up really small and about a teaspoon. Now, here you go, pay attention. I chopped up a dill pickle really small, one whole one, a big one, but I took two teaspoons of bread and butter pickles, those the sweeter ones, and poured that juice in. So you've got a dill pickle, but the bread and butter pickle juice. Ha ha. Celery. Two stalks, chopped up real small. Remember, always wash your produce. And the egg whites, whites only, staying health conscious. Egg whites, three hard boiled eggs, chopped up the egg white, and drop those in. Move all that around a little bit. Don't move. Now, what makes this amazing? See how fun that looks? Just by itself, just like that. Needs a little flavor, but it looks cool. This is our dressing. We're gonna pour on, mix together, and then let's sit overnight in the fridge. Again, this was homemade, very easy to do. And frankly, the ingredients are easy to remember. MMCVS, thank my wife for that one. MMCVS, mustard, mayonnaise, celery seed, vinegar, sugar, done. That's it, seven tablespoons of mayonnaise, two and a half tablespoons of yellow mustard, two and a half teaspoons of sugar, a third of a cup of white wine vinegar, and one teaspoon of celery seed. That's it. I mixed all that together in a bowl, whisked it together really hard, poured it in this jar, and put it in the fridge for a few hours so it gets nice and cold. You pour that on, and get all of it. And believe it or not, you do want all of it. You want a lot because again, like pasta, potatoes are sponges and even when they're cold, they're still spongy and they do soak everything up. And you don't want it to be dried out. You want it to be nice and creamy. So a little extra, even if it looks slightly soupy, is not gonna hurt because it won't be once you serve this. I promise, it's gonna soak it up overnight. And just like the pasta salad, the key to this one, make it the day before. Why? Let it sit, let it get good and cold, let all these flavors come together, let them marinate, let them, oh man, I, I really love the smell of vinegar. I really do. And see this with the sugar and white wine vinegar is, is, is not, too, not too tangy, not too pungent. Uh, but it still has a nice to it. So you throw that sugar in there and it finishes it off with a slight sweet. But man, it's a beautiful smell. Now, I'm going to take this, wrap it up, put it in the fridge and leave it over tonight. When we serve it, it comes out, mix it all up so it has a nice fresh look and top it off with your freshly chopped dried parsley. And once again, you've got two beautiful side dishes between the potato and pasta salad 
that everybody loves. And with 4th of July coming up next week, and hopefully you all are getting together, because I know we're getting together over here, and everybody always brings something. I plan on bringing potato salad, pasta salad, and I got 10 bucks that says I end up on the grill. Yeah, I'll probably end up on the grill, but who cares? I get a kick out of doing it. So we've got these. Tomorrow, we're going to make some burgers. And I know, yeah, burgers, burgers and dogs. That's so simple. It's so basic. But they're classic. And let's do them right. And let's do them easy. We don't need a lot of extra mumbo jumbo. We just need good, fresh, quality ingredients and a beautiful look. And everybody goes crazy for it. Huh? I'm excited. So please, come back tomorrow. Let's do some more cooking. Until then, work on this. Be warned, all of this stuff done from scratch, fresh, it takes a few hours. It took me a few hours this morning to do it, but I had a, bl I had a blast doing it. And uh, both kids helped, they had fun. And you let it cool. Cook it all, put it together, forget about it. That's it. You folks have a great evening. I hope you have a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.